She forged frontiers while facing threats of violence and even the bombing of a Nashville school. Mary Louise Watson, a mother at the forefront of Nashville school desegregation in the 1950s, died this week. She was connected to the Nashville 16, the first students to integrate in 1957. New at 10 tonight, News Channel 5's Jason Lamb spoke to her daughters about her legacy. For a woman who spent her life trying to bring together a divided Nashville in a segregated school system. We are stronger together than, you know, divided. That's how her daughters wanted to talk about their mom. She said, and don't let nobody, nobody make you feel bad about together. who you are. Mary Louise Watson. She always, to me, looked like uh, an ebony model. Died this week. A true leader, her daughters say. She led a whole lot of people. Not just us. But Barbara would tell you it started with her in 1957 when she led Barbara to Jones School with other families the first day Nashville schools were desegregated, being called names and facing threats, some that turned real. Later that night, another Nashville school would be bombed. I mean, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. anybody. Despite it all, her daughters say their mom would tell them to keep going to school and she herself returned the threats she received with love. She made him feel as though she had known him for years and that he was a part of... This family. Yeah. And grafted in. Yeah. You know, to know you is to love you. The Nashville school desegregation icon lived for 99 long years. Her daughters say they thought she could live forever. I can't say that my mom was an angel but she was pretty darn close. Mary Louise Watson had a message for us when we talked to her nine years ago. Her daughters say, together, we could still learn a lot from it today. Bottom line, you have to keep teaching that this is the better way and to love and respect everybody, not just one, but everybody. Everybody. Yes. everybody. Jason Lamb. That was her way. News Channel 5. Watson's family says she died in her sleep Monday with her daughter Barbara Jean by her side.